Automation is powerful, but it's not magic. Today, we're gonna to digitize a football applique and we're gonna let the EL software do most of the heavy lifting, but we will be refining it with proven digitizing theory. Now, if you want fast results without sacrificing quality, this lesson's for you. Now, before we go any further, if digitizing still feels confusing or hit and miss, I wanna help you fix that. I've put together a free digitizing 101 course that walks you through the core theory every embroiderer needs. You'll learn stitch types, underlay base, and why designs behave the way they do. So stop wasting time, thread, and fabric. Okay, well, I'm ready to start my design. I am going to load the artwork. It is a design called Football One. I bring it in as a backdrop within the software. I'm gonna select the backdrop and I'm going to look at the properties. It is in millimeters now. I can toggle very quickly to inches and I'm gonna make this six inches in width. And I'm going to also reduce the opacity so that I can see it a little bit clearer on screen. So now it's a six inch design and I'm just going to move it so it's centered on my screen and I'm pretty much ready to start. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of measuring before I start because I have decisions to make, whether it is going to be a satin or a fill stitch. I really want to do all this in satins if possible. And that's the reason why I want to measure because I want to look at this point from here to here, that white, if I look at it and that is in inches now, I'm going to hit metric. I go from here to here and it is ooh, 12 millimeters, actually maybe even a little over. So I know from the theory that I've been taught that if a machine goes over 12.1 millimeters, it's going to automatically register a trim unless there is a random split, which I do have preset within our software so that we don't get any loose stitches. Uh, if you have a, you know, a sweatshirt and you have stabilizer, even if it is a cutaway stabilizer, when that stabilizer gets laundered, it's going to lose some of its stability. And if there's really long satin stitches, they might start to loop after multiple washings. So that's normally what I have to contend with when I'm worrying or thinking about uh, putting a design on a t-shirt or a sweatshirt because it is milled and it's pretty stretchy. Well, I'm going to put an applique down for this. So I kind of solve that problem. I'm going to have a nice stable piece of material in brown here that I can put this white stitch on top of. So knowing that it's almost 12 millimeters, I'm going to make sure that I digitize this so that I'm not going to exceed 12 millimeters. So knowing that beforehand is a good thing. Uh, I could edit it afterwards as well, but I might as well know going in. I'm also gonna look at the width of this stitch right from here to here, and that is 2.4 millimeters. So I'm gonna also make this wider. I'm gonna probably make it about four millimeters wide. Um, especially with larger appliques, we do have a placement line, which you can actually export as SVG. So you can pre-cut these pieces and just lay them on and line them up to your placement line. Or you can cut on your machine, you know, while it's in the hoop. Uh, that takes a little bit more time, but you want to make sure that your placement and your tack down lines are offset. We have handled all of that within the automation of our software because within our widget here, and I'm just going to choose a brown color, I can see I have a tool called applique. And within my applique, I have different stitch uh, widths. So I'm gonna go from three millimeters to four millimeters. And it does have a placement line, a tack down, and I can also do a zigzag if I want. I'm gonna kind of break this apart afterwards and use a edge run as opposed to a zigzag. Um, because I know this is going to go on sweatshirt material and I want to make sure that it's not, it's going to have a nice clean edge. I want to create a break wall within it. So uh, starting here, I'm just going to start right at the top. I'm going to go to, let's say, a 300% zoom. I like to digitize at 300 and 600%. And starting right here, I'm just going to put a point in and I'm going to curve. So I'm doing right clicks all the way around. Here, I'm going to do a left click because it turns into a straight then a right click, I'm going to just hit my shift, um, my space key, which is my pan, but I do also have it on my mouse. I have a gaming mouse, which has programmable keys. So it allows me to, without even having to go to my keyboard, I just take my thumb and put it on uh, the, you know, I guess button I have assigned to my space bar and it allows me to move very, very easily. Uh, it, we do also have like an auto panning on the software as well, but having both is better than just having the one. So I, now I'm just going to come right back to here and enter and it's automatically going to close the shape. So right now this 
applique is essentially done. It's, you know, four millimeters. It's going to give me my uh, placement, my tack down. Everything is there that I need. Uh, but I'm going to come right over here and let's move this property over. I'm going to come here and grab this. And you're going to see that when I grab one object, it's going to grab all of them because right now these are grouped together. And what I want to do is I want to break apart my applique. And when I hit break apart applique, now I can grab the individual pieces. So I can grab that one part of the applique, which is the brown. And like I said, I want to take this and I'm going to go to the underlay of just that satin uh, steel, the fixed width satin, and I'm going to go to a contour. And that's going to give me that uh, edge run underlay that I was looking for. So there the applique is done. Now I'm going to choose a different color and I'm just going to choose a, let's say a light green color and I'll do the rest of it in green, even though obviously it's going to be white afterwards. But I'm just going to start right over here and I'm going to use, instead of my applique brush, I'm going to use my satin brush. And I'm going to start right here on this side and just go on this side. It's a little bit of a curve, so I'm using my fast draw, coming all the way into here, coming over to the inside here. And then this one, I'm just going to cut this short ever so slightly, because if you remember, we were just hitting that 12 millimeter mark, and now I know I'm going to be just under that. So I'm just going to hit the um, enter button and now it's asking for my stitch direction. So there's one stitch direction, there's another enter and enter and there is a nice clean stitch. And if I look at this in 3D, I'm going to see that I, I do have that you know splicing, that splitting in there. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to select that object, that one object, and I'm going to go down to my auto split and we have it set for a random split uh, as default because we do want it to normally split. I'm going to click on none and now I can see that there is no split there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click off of that and I'm going to switch over to a run stitch because I'm going to run right from this point here. I'm still at 300%. I'm just going to pan over a little bit and I'm going to come right over here and I'm going to come into this next object right here and hit the enter. So now I've traveled from here over to here and I'm going to come in over onto this side. And actually I don't even need to redigitize that. I can just grab this object here and let's just come in and duplicate it. Now that it's duplicated, I'm going to flip it horizontally and now I just have to hold the shift key while I drag this across to the other side and it's going to give me a nice, you know, perfect uh, piece that is exactly the same. I do want to take it though and move it down in the stitch order so it's underneath. So let's move that up because now I want to travel from here. If I hit the Q, there's my start, there's my stop. The next object, start and stop. And then the next object is start, which I'm going to have right over here and stop. So there I have all those pieces in place. Now, all I'm going to do is come up to this part and I am going to zoom into my 600% scale. Uh, I do digitize at six to one uh, for the most part when I'm doing details in a design. And this is a detail that is probably, in my opinion, the most important part of the design. It is the underlay. So this is where I'm taking over the autopilot. The software automatically does pretty much everything, but I know that this is where I might have opposing stitch directions as I do these satins. And when these separate, I don't want to see the brown fabric underneath. I want to see this nice white. It's you know green right now, but it's going to be white thread. I want to see this white thread underneath of all the areas that could potentially separate. So as these satin stitches are created, it's going to separate between these and it's going to give me a nice clean design. That's really what I want is clean embroidery results. So you know, these little stitches that I'm putting down here are probably taking me almost the most time, but they are, in my opinion, the most important stitches in the entire design. Now I'm just kind of using the auto pan feature within the software. If I find that's too slow, I can go and use my pan as well. If I don't like one that I put down, I can always hit backspace and it will just reverse the amount of points. So you're never, you know, fully committed until you hit the enter button. But even if you do hit the enter button, you can always go back in and edit your 
you know, points, add notes, take away notes. So anything that you do, you can go in and you can change it afterwards. So here I just have a bunch of underlay stitches. I call these paranoid underlay because I'm paranoid that I'm going to, you know, not have good stitch results. So now I'm going to hit enter and there is all of my stitches. So let's just move over here a little bit and I'm just going to continue now to work with my, um, let's go out of that brush and let's just use the satin and I'm just going to come right here and put a point right here over to here and back and then over to this side and let's just hit the enter and then stitch direction here stitch direction here enter enter and now that piece is done and then I'm just going to continue to go all the way around the outside of this object come over to here and this one, if you look, I'm going to extend this a little bit. So I'm kind of tricking the, uh, you know, the artwork a tiny little bit by coming in and saying, I need a little bit of overlapping. Uh, it's really underlapping here that is going to go down so that when this stitches, I just have to now do this piece from here and come right over to here. And it's going to kind of fill in the blanks. So there's a point, there's a point, and then enter, enter. That one's done come right here now and do this side I'm going to follow it uh, and then I'm going to come to the other side and I'm going to follow this but if I again backspace if I don't like something I can overextend that little part there so that underlap is kind of going over a little bit and then I'm going to come here here and enter enter the software does have a smart join feature so even you know I don't have to worry about the software you know kind of not knowing where it's going to join it's automatically going to join from the closest point so it's not going to have any unnecessary jumps or trims and then i'm just going to come right over here do this point here to here come around like this right to this point do this one and enter and do this one from here to here if there ever is a spot that i'm looking at that i'm not overly happy with i can always go in and modify that ever so slightly so that one kind of saw a little straggly stitch out there again i'm at 600 percent. so would i have really seen that in the real world not really but you know i do like to be as precise at this scale as i can to make sure i get the best results possible so now i'm going to do this point here and let's come all the way around here so i'm just curve straight straight curve 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 and straight 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 curved all the way around to that side and now it's just stitch direction across there one across here enter enter and then i'm going to come right to here and go to the other side so i'm pretty much halfway through this object or this design and now i'm just going to hit that space bar and let's just pan over a little bit continue on right from here so i'm just going to go across the outside of that and if you notice i do try to stay pretty consistent with how i digitize my objects you know i'm doing the one side first and i'm kind of staying consistent from left to right uh you know just i, I feel building those you know repetitive practices just helps you have less you know margin of error as you move forward and i'm also kind of uh, if you look how i'm uh, having these these stitches go down as far as how this football is threaded it is kind of threaded to how it would be threaded in reality if you were to look at a physical football and how these pieces would be over top of the an underline uh, that's the way it would actually be so that's one thing i do love about embroidery and thread is i can you know mix the thread and create some actual reality because you know embroidery has dimension it's uh it's not flat in appearance it actually has some some loft to it the thread does get picked up by the light and it creates different dimensions as you're moving forward so now i'm going to do this piece right to here come back up go over to here hit enter point here point here enter enter and now the next object just come right here and go around this way and straight straight curve 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 straight 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 and curve curve and straight enter and inclination inclination enter enter and now the next object is right here so i'm just going to come right to here 
and go over like this and let's just come here to here and the last second last object is right here so let's just do this one again just following around the outside being consistent with everything that I do here straight 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 and I might as well do another little straight curve straight enter and inclination inclination enter enter and then this is my last object which I'm just going to kind of have it come like this and oh kind of like this so there's a straight here's a straight enter enter and if I look at how that looks it's actually pretty clean so let's come in here there's this one little object here I think I might change that one a little bit I'm just going to move this point ever down so slightly and actually I don't like the way I did that I don't like the way I did that either so let's change this one and get rid of that object right there so actually that looks a little bit better just like that and now we are done so there is my design and if I look at it right now I can see that everything looks good except for the order of the stitches so I'm going to take that one there and I'm going to actually turn that into white so it's selected and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move it up in the sequence view so it's going to be right after the tack down so if I look at how this is going to sew, here is my stitch right here. I'm just going to see, and I can actually make this the same color. So let's make this white. That way we don't have a color change. It'll go straight from doing the tack down into doing the white. So now I'm going to look at that object and I can see right here that it starts and stops in the same place. And then after that, I'm just going to click down and I'm going to see that the next object here is going to hit that and actually let's move over a little bit I'm pretty sure yet the start and the stop are right here so I'm going to move that start point and let's grab that start point and move it right up to the top here and now I have the start and stop moved and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to unselect that object so I'm just going to unclick it so it is off and I'm going to grab that object and I'm going to do digitize after because I know that it started right here it started and stopped up there so I'm going to do a run stitch and I'm just going to go right from here and go boom right here and let's just take this one and go right over to here just like this and now hit the enter and now if I look in between these I have this object here which is my start and stop and then I have this object here which is my start and stop and then they are done. So now we're going to save our native JDX file format. We're going to also save the DST file so that we can run it on our Tajima Sai. We have this down to three colors. So there is a placement, which can then also be saved as SVG. And then there's a tack down. The tack down goes right into the white details of the design. And then we just have the brown to finish off that border. So there is like 5,102 stitches in this design for a six inch design. Of you know, across the front of a sweatshirt, that is a win. Now, if you enjoyed this football applique lesson and you want to do this yourself, the next step is using the right software. Embroidery Legacy software is built for embroiderers who want control without complexity. It gives you smart automation tools, easy applique features, and the flexibility to apply real digitizing theory, just like you saw here. You also get full training and support, so you're never questioning. If you're ready to create clean custom designs with confidence, EL software is the natural next step. And that's the real takeaway here. Automation can save you a lot of time, but quality still comes from understanding why you're making certain choices. When you combine smart tools inside the EL software with solid old school digitizing theory, you get results you can trust every time. If this football applique helped things click for you, don't stop here. Keep practicing, keep testing your stitch outs, and most importantly, keep learning how designs actually work on fabric. That's how you build your confidence as a digitizer. So thanks for digitizing along with me today. I'll see you in the next lesson and until then keep on stitching.